Hello? Perfect. So, hello, my name is Tudor Florescu. Thank you for the introduction. I am a Big Defender sales engineer, and today we're going to discuss about the cyber, let's say, the art of war, and how we can apply uh, military warfare to cybersecurity. So, let's take a quick look over the agenda. I'm going to start with some history lessons because I think it's very important to understand what happened to the past in order to prevent it from happening again. Then we're going to see how can we apply that, what are the lessons to be learned, and in the end, who are we to talk about this? Who is the defender that we talk about these kind of things? So I will go through uh, some quick examples. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to give all the details about these scenarios. And I will start with uh, 2013. I've selected some news from every year from the past six years, which I think will be relevant to the people in this room. So I'm starting with 2013 with a Target switch. Now, Target is an American retailer who had a very, very big problem. They failed to notice that some hackers managed to infiltrate their point of sales and were able to uh, scrape data from POSs, credit card information, and exfiltrate it. The breach occurred in late 2013 and actually lasted over two months. Now, um, if it wasn't a big problem, now the numbers are very bad. We're talking about 40 million credit card information. If we think about it, it's more than 10% of the US population. Also, 110 million user data were exfiltrated. And to make matters even worse, they failed to notice the breach. It was actually external sources who raised the alarm. Now, moving forward to 2014, we have a vulnerability. It is called Heartbleed. It has a very big score on the vulnerability uh, table, 9.4 out of 10. And it is basically uh, an open SSL library vulnerability affecting all Linux versions. Now, because it has such a big score, it was fixed in a matter of days by Red Hat. And it was actually implemented by 99% of companies within one month. Because, and because it got uh, coverage in the news. So for this one, I don't have any breaches because it was such a critical, um, it could have had a, such a critical impact, companies were aware of it and they patched it in time. Now, to move forward to 2015, we have another company called Ashley Madison. Uh, they run a, a service which was basically matrimonial dating for married people. Now, if you think about it, you could see the immorality in this company. And this is what some hackers uh, thought about it. And they said, to, they, they came with a warning and said, take the systems down or we will take them down for you. Of course, nobody wants to do that by force, so they kept running. In a matter of days, their entire customer database ended up on the internet with phone numbers, names, email addresses, and everything. They moved from a, a possible IPO to almost bankruptcy in a matter of months. But most importantly, because they ignored the warning and because they didn't take any additional measures, it actually impacted people's lives in a more serious uh, way. There were some reports of people finding out that their names are out in the open and everybody can see that they logged on the website, so unfortunately, they committed suicide. This is a very, let's say, a very uh, good case when cybersecurity uh, done wrong can impact somebody's life. Then we move to closer to Europe, to 2016. And as you know, there is a bit of a problem between Russia and Ukraine geopolitical problem. Now, in 2014, Russia took Crimea from Ukraine, as you well know, and now they're pushing to get more because of resources. But today's modern warfare is not uh, done with tanks or with soldiers. It is done through software. It is done through cyber warfare. And it, the best example I have is this one with 2016, when Ukraine experienced several energy blackouts, which were later attributed due to malware breaches. Now, of course, nobody can say that the Russians did it, but one plus one equals three. So 
And in this scenario, again, we can see how cybersecurity done, um, done wrong can impact the geopolitical context of a continent. To move on the other side of the ocean, we have the Democratic, Democratic National Congress. It's still 2016, and we have the presidential elections, Hillary versus Trump. Now, in a couple of months before elections, the entire data, uh, database of the Democratic Party ended up on the internet. Uh, there is a hacker, Guccifer 2.0, which is which is attributed, uh, which has been, you know, uh, blamed for this hack. Nobody knows exactly who did it. Speculations are, and they're still investigating. Speculations are that the, again, the Russians did it. Uh, and, but the end result matters. In the end, Trump won. He's now president. We cannot say here again, just like the Ukraine scenario, we cannot say for sure that because of the leak, Hillary lost. But of course it gave ammo to Trump to use in the elections. And he was able to, to press all the right buttons in the presidential debates. Now, if we move a bit closer to today's landscape, 2017, we see another vulnerability called Eternal Blue. Now, things here are different compared to uh, Heartbleed. Uh, the severity of this vulnerability is not as high as Heartbleed. But because of that, it went mainly uh, unnoticed. And there are three things here. First and foremost, it was reported to Microsoft in January 2017. They released a patch in two months in May, March. But they didn't release it for all Windows versions. Windows XP, Windows Server 2003 were not supported anymore. So they said, we don't care. Customers should move to a newer operating system. And second of all, because um, it didn't have such a big um, severity score, some customers ignored it. They failed to install it. So since March to May, not all companies patched their systems. And in May, we've experienced the first um, ransomware that uses this vulnerability called WannaCry. And although most AV vendors detected it, although there was a, a, a patch available for that, still, there were big companies affected by that. And that was not the only example of 2017. If you do some Google research on Eternal Blue Lansomer, you'll see that we have uh, the top three candidates are WannaCry, Petya, and not Petya, all through 2017, all using the same vulnerability, which shows uh, the concern of, of some companies on when it comes to patching. Now, in 2018, cyber criminals are noticing that, well, b towards the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, they notice that cryptocurrency prices are going up. So they want to take advantage of that. So they're designing a new piece of malware called cryptojacking. They notice that, well, with ransomware, you can get some money, that, but people are, uh, are affected and they get pissed about it. With cryptojacking, because it uses just some resources of the company, of the hardware, you can go unnoticed for a long time, and customers might not be that offended. Because they don't see how much money you're making. But the numbers are pretty big. With WannaCry, the, the attackers uh, took 150K. With, Cypro, with uh, cryptojacking, there are campaigns which last a couple of months, and they're making millions in cryptocurrency. And things are not going to stop. As you can see, we're, we're getting close to a billion malware samples, and why should they stop? They're making money, so there's no reason to do that. Now, the presentation is called The Art of War, because we can apply some, some um, things from, from the past to the present. Now, Greece is famous for a lot of things. But when we talk about education, Greece is, is well known because of its philosophy and because its psychology. You know, we have Pythagoras, Socrates, uh, Aristotle, these guys who wrote important books which are in use even today. On the other side of the, of the continent, we have the Chinese people. And they didn't care that much about the mind, but they cared about warfare. So, with, um, with the Chinese, we have this Chinese uh, military guy, military general, Sun Tzu. And 
more than 2,000 years ago, he wrote a book, The Art of War. And he has a couple of quotes which I think can be applied today from military, uh, military experience to cybersecurity. First and foremost, it says, if you don't know yourself and you don't know the attacker, then you're going to lose all the battles. And this is why I gave you those examples. Those companies which ended up in the news didn't know what their critical assets were. They didn't know who's going to attack them, although some of them received the warning. So of course they got breached and now they're paying the price for that. Next, we have, let's say, a mild quotation for the same book. If you know yourself, but you don't know the attacker, you'll have some losses, but you'll also have some wins. Because you do know what your critical infrastructure is, you do know what you need to protect, so you're taking care of that, but you don't know who is attacking you. And of course, that may, might lead to some uh, bad things and to some breaches. But with this kind of customers, usually at least they're monitoring things and they're able to react in due time. Now, the worst one is if, the, well, the best scenario is if you know yourself, if you know your company, your assets, your critical infrastructure, and you know who's attacking you, then you will be able to win all the battles. Now, Sun Tzu was very, let's say, very confident. He said 100%, which is very good. Now, how can we help or what can be done about this? Well, how can you know yourself? Uh, it wouldn't be feasible to, to buy Sun Tzu's uh, art book, The Art of War book. I don't think it would be applied in everyday job. But you can use a framework. A framework will be able to give you some ideas about what you need to protect, okay, and how to reduce the risk to vulnerabilities. It will be your go-to document in case something happens. If you have a breach, a framework will help you deal with that. But there are so many frameworks to choose from. Now, I don't like to talk very abstract. I like to give examples, and I've selected one example to see for the customers who do not have it, for the companies who do not have it, to see one example. And we have the, the NIST framework. And as you can see, it has five areas, which I think, from my point of view, are very clear. You need to identify what is important and critical for your, for your company. You need to protect it. How do you detect what's happening? How do you respond to that? And how do you recover from a breach? This is just an example, I'm not advertising the framework, but it's just an example which can be implemented by you to know yourself. Now, next, how can B Defender help? Well, we can help you in knowing the attackers. This is what B Defender does. You come with the, with the expertise about your environment and we will come with the expertise of the attackers. Now, who is Bdefender? Well, I have a couple of answers. If you ask the industry, they will say that we are a trusted partner. Why? Because we have more than 150 companies in the industry using Bdefender technology. If you ask the laboratories, you will see that they will say that we are a consistently top-rated solution. Because this is what we do. If we win a test, it's not just by luck and we participate in all the ma major tests like you see here. If you ask our customers, so, sorry, if you ask ourselves, if you ask us, well, we will say that we are the largest cybersecurity technology vendor because we know attackers. We protect more than 500 million endpoints with our technology. This is what we do. If you ask the enterprise customers who are already using Bdefender, hopefully the answer will be, ah, Bdefender is gravity zone. Bdefender is the single agent, single console, next generation EDR endpoint security platform of their choice. Why? Why did they choose us? Because we know attackers, and if you come to us with the knowledge of what you need to protect, we will be able to tell you if Bdefender fits you or what you need to do in, aid, in order not to get into the news. Thank you.